Hello YouTube, I'm Lucifer192 and if you're here, you're not happy with the sound of your microphone, for your streams and for your videos. I'm going to help you take it from this to this. You don't need a thousand dollars worth of audio equipment to make your microphone sound crisp for your content. So I'm going to show you today what steps you can take to get the absolute best out of your equipment and sound just as good, if not better than your favorite content creators. As someone with a master's degree in studio production, I believe it's extremely important to understand the process of what you're doing to your audio. With the aid of some industry standard software, I'm going to explain how each of these effects work and then we're going to use OBS to apply them to your audio. Before we approach any software processing, I want to talk to you about microphone placement as this is one of the biggest factors in getting that microphone sound that you want. If you don't have access to a microphone boom arm, I strongly suggest you get yourselves one of those before anything else. The boom arm that I'm using, you can pick up for about 15 to $20 on Amazon and that gives you the freedom to put the microphone it close to you while keeping it out of the way. The ideal place that you want your microphone is about a fist away. As you can see here, my microphone's about a fist away from my mouth. Anything up to six to eight inches is good, but the closer the better. The closer it is to you, the less ambient room sound you're gonna pick up from your microphone. Like reverb from walls, from hard floors, and from the ceiling in your room. With my noise gate turned off, if I move my microphone further away from me, you'll be able to hear the difference in sound quality. There'll be less bass and more reverb from the room, and we want to avoid that as much as possible. The next thing to consider is which way your microphone is pointing. Microphones typically come with a cardioid polar pattern, and what that means is that it will pick up sound best from one side of the microphone and reject sound from the opposite side. For me, my microphone is pointing up at my face and the back is pointing down towards my keyboard. Now what that does will reject any keyboard sound the most efficiently. So I don't have keyboard clattering going along while I'm streaming and while I'm recording. The last thing to consider for microphone placement is keeping it consistent. If you have something like a boom arm, you can, if you want to sit back, can move the microphone to the same position, the same distance away from your face. As we dive into the software processing, moving the position of the microphone is going to change how the effects work. So you wanna try and keep the microphone in the same position anywhere possible. Something that's going to be really beneficial and helpful in this process is going into your advanced audio settings in OBS, finding your microphone and turning the audio monitoring on. That way you can hear the changes that we're going to be making. The next step in setting up your microphone is correctly setting up the gain. A lot of people don't do this properly and end up having their microphone clip when they get too loud. Now, digital clipping sounds horrible. Digital clipping will result in a crackly sound and it'll sound like a distorted guitar. The way that we're going to avoid this happening is by using something called metering. There are multiple ways to meter the input signal from your microphone. And the first way I'm going to show you is if you're using an XLR microphone into an audio interface. I've set up a second microphone that's plugged directly into my MacBook Pro, which you can see on the screen. We're gonna correctly set the input gain for this microphone. Now, just in front of me, I've got the interface set up on my desk. Now on top, I can control the mic gain with this knob. I've added on a metering plugin to the software to the left of the interface on the screen so you can see the level. Now I'm gonna hold this microphone the same distance as the, my streaming microphone from my mouth. And as I turn the gain up, you can start to see a little green light on the interface. Now that means that they, it is recognizing a certain level of signal going into the interface. If I shout, it's going to clip. Now that means that we need to turn the gain down. 
So it's, it's an uncomfortable process, but what you need to do is once you've got your microphone in position, you need to shout into the microphone the loudest that you think you're going to shout during your content. If you're not using a USB audio interface with metering lights like I'm using, then you can actually also meter the levels in OBS. Now, as you can see, my microphone is metering right here in the mixer window. And you want to do the same shout test and make sure it's never hitting all the way to the right of the red. Once you've properly set up the microphone gain, next thing you're going to want to do is set up a noise gate. Now a noise gate only allows audio to pass through your microphone when you're talking. And we can set this up to eliminate unwanted noise such as fans, banging or other ambient sounds in your studio or room. The noise gate works like a physical gate. It will only open when a certain threshold has been hit. So what we want to do with our threshold is set the point at which the noise gate is going to open and allow this sound to come through. When you set up a noise gate in OBS, it will give you five options for your noise gate. Close threshold, open threshold, attack time, hold time and release time. Now I'm going to use the noise gate in Logic to show you how this works. Now the threshold is at what point your microphone will allow the sound to pass through. Now on the lower left of the window, you can see the level of the microphone that is plugged into the MacBook. And when I talk, the level is around minus 40 to minus 35. Now we can set the threshold of the noise gate to minus 35 to only allow the sound through when the signal reaches minus 35. Now in OBS, we have an additional setting, which is the close threshold. Now the settings in OBS are measured in dB, which are decibels. My th close threshold is set five decibels lower than my open threshold. So if I'm talking quietly and start to trail off, the noise gate won't close prematurely. Now the other settings that we have access to in OBS are attack time, hold time, and release time. The attack time is how long it will take the gate to open once the audio level reaches the threshold that we set. So we want to set the attack time as low as possible. So we're gonna set that attack time to one millisecond or zero milliseconds if possible. The hold time is how long the gate is going to stay open once the audio level has dropped below the closed threshold. Another thing that we can do to stop the noise gate Cutting off the sound prematurely is to set a short hold time. I have mine set to about 100 milliseconds. The third setting we have access to is the release time. The release time is how long it takes the gate to close once the audio drops below the close threshold and after the hold time. To allow the noise gate to sound natural, I like to set a longer release time which means that the audio will fade out instead of cut off dramatically. So I set mine at 250 milliseconds, which is a quarter of a second, which is plenty of time to allow the sound to fade out naturally. Now that we've set those settings on the logic noise gate, you can see with the lights that next to the open and close text, the noise gate is opening when I speak and closing when I'm not talking. And you can see that the light slowly fades out to show that it's not an immediate cutoff with the sound. The next thing you're going to want to set up is a compressor. A compressor will compress the loudest sounds of an audio signal and bring it into a similar range as the quieter sounds. In this case, the audio signal is our microphone. Humans typically talk in a dynamic way where some words are quieter and some words are louder. And in gaming content, there's also typically some shouting involved when you get mad at the video game or get a huge win. In OBS, the settings we have access to are ratio, threshold, attack, release and output gain. And we're going to run through those and show you how to set them up properly. So the threshold of the compressor, similarly to the noise gate, is at what level the audio is going to be compressed at. Now, if I hold up this microphone again, we want the compressor to activate whenever I'm talking louder than my normal speaking voice. Now, there's a really helpful graph on Logic, which is why I'm showing you on this software. 
At the very top of the graph, you can see a little white line, which is showing how much the compressor is acting. So this is going to be my normal speaking volume and I want to hit the threshold. So it's only activating when I'm talking a little bit louder. So here, when I'm talking normally, it's not really doing anything. If I talk louder, it's going to start compressing. The ratio of a compressor is how much the audio signal is reduced above the threshold once it hits the threshold. With a ratio of six to one, any sound that goes above the threshold will be reduced to one sixth above that threshold. To give a numbers example, if you set a threshold of 10 and the audio level reaches 16, with a compressor ratio of six to one, everything above the 10 dB will be reduced to one sixth, resulting in a total audio level of 11. Now let's take a look at this handy little graph. The dark color is the signal and the white line at the top is how much the compressor is reducing the signal. As you can tell, I'm going from talking quietly to talking louder. Well, the resulting dark lines are all in a similar range. And if I start to talk really loud, you can see that the compressor is reducing the signal more and keeping it within a similar range. As we did with the noise gate, we want the attack time to be the lowest it can be, which is one. We then want to keep the release time around 50 or 60 milliseconds to stop it from compressing the signal once it gets below the threshold. The last compressor setting we're going to change is the makeup gain. In OBS, this is labeled as output gain. This is probably one of the most important settings on the compressor. After setting up the gain correctly earlier, the signal probably looks pretty low. And once we've compressed the signal, it's gonna be even lower. We're going to use the makeup gain to increase our overall sound level to the level that we wish it to be recorded at. Just below the camera, I've added on the meter from my recording microphone. You want to use the makeup gain to turn up your microphone until it's comfortably sitting in the middle of the red section. Now the microphone is probably what you're gonna have as the loudest part of your stream. The red does not mean that the microphone is clipping. It means it's getting close to it, but because we've added on the compressor to make the louder sounds quieter, it's not going to clip. Getting your microphone level this loud means that you can easily turn it down at a later date with the slider in the mixer in OBS. It's much harder to go back and turn the microphone up if you haven't set up the compressor properly. So if you're still wondering why we set up the compressor, let's turn it off and find out why. With the compressor turned off, we have a relatively quiet signal coming in and there's a lot of dynamic range between me talking quietly and me talking loudly. With the compressor turned on, it sounds much more like those radio style voices you're used to hearing from your favorite creators. There's a smaller dynamic range, which means everything is clear and audible at all times. And if you shout, you're not gonna blow someone's eardrums out. The next thing we're going to add to your microphone is an EQ. Now, unfortunately, OBS does not have one built in, so we're going to have to use something called a VST. VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology, and we're essentially going to download a third party EQ and allow OBS to use that. Now, you want to go to reaper.fm slash replugs, R-E-A-P-L-U-G-S, and you'll get to this website. You want to download the right package for you, either 32-bit or 64-bit. Once you've downloaded the file, you can run the installer. I would leave everything ticked and that will install a bunch of plugins that you may want to experiment with at a later date. We can click through, install. I already have it installed, so I'm going to ignore this. We are going to be using reEQ standalone.dll. We're going to be using VEQ. Once it's selected, open the plugin interface and it'll open a pop-up window of this equalizer. I've gone ahead and pulled up the EQ for the microphone that you're listening to. There are two things to consider when EQ in your microphone. One is microphone type and two is your voice. Dynamic microphones such as an SM7B typically have a narrower frequency response. So less, very low bass and less high frequency content. 
condenser microphones are the opposite. They have a very broad frequency response and typically sound more trebly. The first thing you're going to want to do is add in a high pass filter. And this is gonna cut out all of the super low frequencies like desk banging, low hums from your PC or anything like that from your microphone. Ensure you have the first tab selected and change the type to high pass filter. Now 100 Hertz is a good place to start, but I typically will roll mine back to about 70. When you approach the EQ, you want to approach it in a reductive way. This means that you want to cut frequencies as opposed to boosting them. That way you don't result in any additional volume, which is going to make your mic clip as we're placing the EQ after the compressor. One of the best frequencies that you can reduce is the 1K region. So select the number two tab on the EQ, ensure it is set to band, change the frequency to around 1000, reduce the gain down by around 2.5 to three, and you can use the bandwidth to change the range that this will affect. I like to keep mine around two. Now the additional frequencies that you're going to EQ are going to be entirely dependent on your microphone type and your voice. On my EQ on the left, I have boosted around the 120 Hertz range to give a little bit more body to my voice. I've also reduced around the 3K or 3000 Hertz range as this part of the microphone that I'm using can sound very trebly and harsh. The other two notches in the EQ that you can see are to eliminate hums and fan noise from my computers. This is a little bit more advanced, but this is something you can experiment with to try and reduce even more unwanted noise. EQ is very personal, it's very subjective, and it's also very relative. You won't often have listened to your voice in this kind of way, so it can be kind of awkward. So what a really good thing to do is, is go and get some content from one of your favorite creators who you think sounds great and EQ your mic so it sounds similar to theirs. I would advise that you stay away from changing the EQ on any individual point by more than 3 dB, as that is usually more than enough to get the desired effect. The final plugin that I use is built into OBS and it's called Noise Suppression. This helps me with unwanted ambient sounds on my microphone, such as fan noise from my computer. It is worth keeping in mind that the noise suppression plugin will slightly change the sound of your microphone. So putting it before the EQ in your effects chain means that you can use the EQ to add back in any frequencies that the noise suppressor has taken away that you wanted to keep in the microphone. And there you go. Your microphone should now be sounding sweet and crisp and clear and should be ready for any streaming or video content that you've got planned. If you found any of this video helpful, consider subscribing, dropping a like and a comment and recommending it to your friends. I'm sure some of you have got some friends out there who need some help with their microphone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.